Just... My precious brothers in the flesh, colleagues and brothers in Christ, I've been uh, hesitant for many, many weeks, months, but uh, I decided to share with uh, all of you my testimony in my spiritual life with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'll try to make it as short as possible, but uh, I have to share it with all my brethren. When I was in my fourth year of medicine at University of Kinshasa in the DRC, Congo, it came a time when <clears throat> we had people who came from India. Initially, they were saying that, uh, yeah, they wanted to help students, uh, you know, with uh, yoga. And then uh, later on, they introduced the spiritual aspect of it, which was meant for us to be initiated and later on to be baptized. We were really very interested, I must acknowledge it, you know, being young with a lot of, a lot of ambitions in life. We were more or less between, uh, I think, more or less 12 students who decided to follow the spiritual aspect of yoga. We met in a room we used to call it Home 20 for students, Corridor 25. We met with uh, those so-called masters who came from India. They, after a short brief, uh, briefing, they asked us to sit on a small piece of cloth with that sign that uh, Hitler put on his uniform. And now they, they wanted us to repeat some few words that they, they were calling mantra. I decided to be the last person to sit on that small piece of cloth. But what was amazing, the so-called master had to lay hands Upon each one of us, okay, the first one comes, lays his hand, you know, you sit there, then uh, you repeat some few words, and then he will ask you, did you see anything? No, I didn't see, I didn't see. Now I was wondering, what are we supposed to see? Of course, I was the last one. As soon as I sat on that piece of cloth, I saw You know, a man appearing unto me, very upset, rebuking me, shouting at me. Now he was speaking in French. Toi! And when you could look at the picture of that, if I can describe that face, of course, of uh, a man full of authority, with his hair, it was completely whitish, like uh, the judges, you know, when they are wearing those hats. And then, of course, as soon as he shouted at me, I opened the eyes. I couldn't continue to repeat those mantras that they gave to me. Now, the so-called master looked at, looked at me and said, did you feel anything? I denied. They said, no, I didn't see anything. And then he told me, as soon as I put my hands on your head, I could feel fire. And then he told me, 
if you continue with what we are trying to you know to do with you you will be more than me and of course they wanted us to meet the following day for the baptism somewhere in Kinshasa there is a river called Njili River somewhere there now as we were going out of that room one of my friends I'm gonna mention his name because he's now also a doctor he's a specialist in anesthesia in South Africa his name is Joachim Gibango he was fast asleep as we we're coming out of that room I saw Joachim Joachim coming towards me calling me say my friend I was fast asleep and the Lord Jesus Christ woke me up because he wants me to speak to you and then he called me in his room in the campus of course now I start telling me about Jesus, Jesus. And in my heart I was saying, but I know all these things that he's telling me. There is nothing new. And then I remember one thing that he mentioned. He said, my friend, I'm sure, because those days we used to call him pastor, because he was praying a lot. And uh, I believe even now he's still praying a lot. And um, he told me, before sleeping tonight, you must pray so that himself should speak to you. Of course, that night, it was almost towards half past 11 at night, towards midnight, I decided to kneel down and to pray. As soon as I start praying, I heard a voice telling me, my son, open your Bible. I said, no. I saw a face, a man screaming at me. Now I'm hearing a voice. As I'm talking to you, my Bible is open before me. I know this. It is not something that uh, I have created. It's, it's something real. That is my spiritual life experience. And there's the voice was, you know, coming louder, louder. Open your Bible. I opened the Bible. It was John chapter 5, verse 43. I will read it to you. The Bible says, actually it was the Lord Jesus Christ complaining. He said, I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. My precious brothers, for the first time I was crying like a baby. And then I knew immediately that what I was about to do, it was not right. And you know what happened? The following morning, those people came because we were supposed to meet somewhere around 9 o'clock. They came to knock at my, my room in the campus around 5 o'clock in the morning. I said, what's wrong with you? I said, no, we must go. I said, no, but you said 9 o'clock, it's 5. I said, yes, but you know, we can't, we can't lose you. And of course, I refused. It became like an argument between them and myself. I said, no, I'm not going. And it happened, of course, you know, I, I, I never continued with uh, those people. Till when I completed my medical school, I got a job in Lubumbashi, which is almost 2,000 kilometers away from... Uh, uh, our capital city, Kinshasa, almost 2,000 kilometers. And being a Catholic, on the 24th of December, 
1992. I had to drop my wife somewhere because she was attending some uh, classes. And then I said to myself, okay, since I'm going to the church, you know, for, you know, Catholic Christmas is a special day, yeah? you know. And then I said, okay, I will sit towards the exit so that when time comes for me to go out, I can just, you know, leave the church. Okay, I will leave, then I will go and fetch my wife. But what happened? The Catholic Church that I liked so much, as soon as I went in, the same voice that screamed at me was telling me, my son, come out of this place. I said, no, I can't. The voice now started even reasoning with me. Can you see what the priest is doing there? Is there any difference between what he's doing and magician? I looked at it. Now I start remembering when we were still at primary school, when the magicians were coming at our school, the, the kind of tricks that they were doing. I said, no, even so, I'm not going out. Now this time it was no more a voice. It was an invisible hand, mighty hand, that took me out of the Catholic Church. And my brothers, as soon as my feet were out of the Catholic Church, that cathedral in Lubumbashi, I felt peace in my heart. And then I stood in front of the Catholic Church and said, wow, it's either the devil is in me or the devil is inside. Now, since I can feel this peace out of that church, I will never go back there. That is how I left the Catholic Church. 24th of December, 1992. Now, it came a time when, because of uh, political instability and a lot of things, I decided to run away from my country to cross over Zambia. In May 1993, in Zambia, Lusaka, I was about to get my job, or no, okay, to be appointed as a doctor after interviews and many things. I met a pastor. I'm not going to mention his name. Right now, that pastor is in USA. He started telling me about the message of the hour. And then he started mentioning about Brother Branham, spoke about the message. And then in my heart I was saying, no, that name of Branham in Kinshasa when I was still a student, we had many people who were, who were idolaters, who were wearing t-shirts with uh, this picture, with that picture, and then they could write there, Branham is God. Now, this time I meet a pastor in Lusaka telling me about the same brother Branham. I say, oh no, Lord, as I was not prepared to accept what the pastor was telling me, the same voice came and instructed me, my son, you must believe this message. And I can still remember stopping that pastor. I told him, pastor, you know what? You have been speaking throughout the voice that took me from the Catholic Church, the voice that stopped me, you know, from being baptized by those people from yoga, is instructing me now to believe this message. That is how I believe the message. And later on, I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when this, this pastor was telling me about uh, Brother Brandon, and then he mentioned, Say, yeah, 
on the 28th of February 1963. Let me make sure about the date. Yes, 28th of February 1963. This is the testimony from that pastor. He said, Brother Branham received from the Lord himself an instruction that on that day he will okay, something supernatural will appear on the sky. And people were ready with their photos, you know, the machines and whatsoever to take pictures. And then they took pictures and one of them, it's not exactly this one, that the one that that pastor showed to me, but uh, he showed me a picture almost similar to this one, but the one that he showed to me, I could recognize the man who shouted at me when I was about to be baptized by the yoga. And then I told that pastor, this is the man who, who shouted at me. That pastor is in USA now, he's still alive. And then he was so happy to see that uh, he, he was in front of someone who so similar picture screaming at him and those who were there they were saying that that was the Lord Jesus Christ himself his face appeared there now listen brothers after I have accepted the message this pastor told me that's why I don't want to mention his name this pastor told me, my precious brother, now you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone who is destroying the message. And then he started mentioning Ewan Frank. Say this man, he mentioned many, many wrong things, you know, destroying this man. Say this man has been going through all over the earth destroying the message. I said, how come? Anyway, by God's grace, my job was not in dollar. I mean, it was not in Lusaka, it was in dollar. Now that pastor gave me the contact of Another pastor, they were calling uh, Sisters Church or something like that, when I was supposed to go and start fellowshipping because I could be now in dollar. What happened that Sunday? For the first time in my life, I saw a pastor reading one scripture from the Bible. Closed the Bible, took the Bible, put it under the pupils. And then uh, he took very huge number of brochures, put on top. I said, oh, what's going on here? Now he could say, Brother Branham said, oh, you see the church, it's like, uh, you know, people who are... Who is now drunk? Brother Branham said, oh, Brother Branham said. Then I was saying, okay, what's going on here? That day, I heard the name of Brother Branham. I can say more than 90% and the name of Jesus Christ less than 10%. If I can try to, you know, to think exactly what I was experiencing i said no there must be something wrong here and of course i decided not to go again to that church i prefer to stay 
in my hotel room because by that by that time the government the Zambian government didn't have uh, didn't provide for us accommodation I mean uh, we're still all of us in the hotel waiting for uh, the accommodation for all the doctors we were up, it was more or less 10 doctors in that hotel a very nice hotel the following Sunday as I mentioned, I didn't go to church. My wife asked me, say, but uh, you're not going to your church? Because by then she didn't believe. I said, no, I'm not going. I stayed in my room. She went down because we were at, uh, I think, uh, second floor. She went down, she was with one of our sisters, who, who was also a doctor, she's now in Botswana. They were down there at the reception talking, you know, Lingala. Lingala is one of the languages in the Congo. Then came a brother, Brother Kalele. Brother Kalele came and then when he, he, he met them, he said, yeah, he starts now testifying unto them about the word of God. Then my wife said, but you speak like my husband. Say, where is your husband? Say, he's in the, in the bedroom. Say, didn't you go to church? Say, no. Can you call him? So I went down. I saw Brother Kalele and with many other brothers who are pastors, of course. And he started telling me, say, no, but your wife told me that uh, you believe the message of the hour. I say, yes, I do believe the message. But why didn't you go to church today? Then I told him about the incident. Say, no, I didn't go because uh, that pastor, you know, how can he just mention Branham, 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 and then I didn't hear the name of Jesus. And then Brother Kaleli told all other brothers, say, this one is an elect. And then he said, This afternoon, Brother Frank from Germany is sharing the word of God. Let me tell you, Brother Frank and the ministers were supposed to have a ministerial meeting in a hotel called Savoy Hotel. Savoy Hotel is like a five-star hotel in, in dollar, if my, yes. It's a very nice hotel. The very same Sunday, I don't know what happened there at Savoy Hotel. They had to change the venue at the last minute. So, out of the, all the hotels that are in Nola, from Savoy Hotel, they were accommodated in New Ambassador Hotel where we were accommodated. That is where they had now their ministerial meeting. And that is how Brother Kalele met my wife and Sister Nsangi. Now, as we were invited, it was to me very difficult to say, I'm not coming to that meeting because I was told that Brother Frank is destroying the message. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters. As we were going, my heart was, was in trouble. I said, Lord, now I'm going to listen to Brother Frank. But you know what happened? As soon as the meeting started, it was towards 6 p.m., Brother Frank asked some few brothers who were preachers to read some few words of exhortation. After they read, the brother stood up. As soon as he starts speaking, precious brothers and sisters, my Bible is open before me. If I'm telling a lie, I will answer. But I know it is not a lie because this is true. 
the same voice that screamed at me when I was about to be baptized by the people from yoga. The same voice that took me from the Catholic Church. The same voice that told me, you must accept this message. The same voice told me, my son, this is my servant. You must listen to what he's saying. And that was the 22nd of August, 1993 in Dola. And that was the day. When my wife believed this message, my precious brother Nsangi, his wife, and my young sister. And later on, they were also baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Precious brothers and sisters, you might say, but what is happening to this man today? Yes. You know, I rather tell you what I have experienced. Of course, this is my personal experience. It's up to you to accept or to reject. But I'm telling you, this is the experience that I received from God himself. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the ministry of this precious brother, Brother Ewart Frank. This brother, I will cut it short. This brother received a commission from the Lord on the 2nd of April, 1962. The Lord Jesus Christ himself told him that he will send him all over the earth. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ instructed him, hallelujah, that this brother should put in store food. Now, the brother did not understand well. According to him, he thought that uh, the food was the natural food. Maize, rice, uh, potatoes, beans, or something like that. And then he became more and more and more worried that uh, how come he got the instruction from the Lord, but uh, nothing happened. Until when he went to United States of America to meet Brother Frank and uh, Brother Branham. And Brother Branham told him, word by word, in front of two witnesses who were there, that my precious brother Frank. You didn't hear properly. The food that you have to put in store is not the natural food. The, the food that you have to put in store, it is the message that I'm preaching. And the two brothers who were witnesses there, it was brother Banks Woods, and Fred Sothman, brother Branham, this brother, repeated word by word what the Lord has spoken to this brother in German language exactly about what he was supposed to do. And then the brother Branham told him, wait. Until when the time will be will be ready for you to start distributing the food. Now, this okay. Uh, in 1965, the Lord took back home Brother Branham. Actually, listen. 
they were brothers in Canada at Edmonton. One day, they called Brother Frank. They followed him after meetings. They asked him, Brother, your ministry is known all over the earth. We can see that the ministry of Brother Branham is found in the Bible. For those who have trouble, I can still show you because uh, I, I want to make it short. We can see the ministry of Brother Branham in the Bible. But where are you in the Bible? And then Brother Frank told me, no, 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 leave me alone, leave, leave me alone. He just said, okay, au revoir, bye, 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 bye. He went and uh, he, he went to his hotel room. On the 19th of September, 1976, the Lord Jesus Christ woke up this brother and told him that he called him according to Matthew chapter 24 from verse 45 to verse 47. I'm going to read to you that scripture. It is not a self-appointee. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who appointed him. That was on the 19th September 1976. I can't forget that name and that date because it is. Uh, I was born also on the 19th of September. Sometimes. Of course, before 1976, many, many years ago. That's why I can't forget that date. And when we read Matthew 24, from verse 45, listen what the Bible is saying. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So there must be a faithful and wise servant that the Lord, according to this scripture, that will find him working. And when you read in the book, the same, you know, in, in the same order, in the book of Luke, oh my, Luke chapter 12, I'll read from verse, I can even start from verse 40. Be therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speaketh thou this parable unto us, or, ev or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing of a truth. I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he had. According to these two scriptures, there must be a wise faithful servant or steward that the Lord himself shall find him doing the work. That's why, precious brothers and sisters, since 22nd of August, 1993, I, your brother, my ministry is growing under that ministry. I'm not a Branhamite, 
I'm not a Frankist. I'm just a, a distributor of the food. And this man, this brother, is fit all over the earth. His feet have trodden upon 164 countries. Right now, he's serving 175 countries through connections by internet, by, you know, so many ways. Precious brothers and sisters, why I'm giving such testimony? You may say, maybe this brother is just, uh, you know, a fanatic. I'm not a fanatic. I just want to let you know what the Lord is doing now. And before I close my testimony, there was a time when I was sent to Serenje by the Zambian government to go and work as a doctor, of course. Whilst I was there, the Lord used me to start a church. Many brothers were baptized. I was called John the Baptist there. There was a Sunday. As I was about to baptize a brother, I saw on the blue sky a huge, shining, goldish cross. On the sky and I asked the brethren who were next to me say brother can you see what I'm saying there of course it was a vision I could see it no one else saw it apart from myself and of course that huge shining goldish cross disappeared the Lord has used some of us in many ways, recently, March this year, whilst I was sharing the word of God in Bandarbeck, here in Australia, a brother from that assembly testified unto me, say, brother, whilst you were preaching, I saw the angel of the Lord standing at your right. I didn't see it. That was his testimony. My precious brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ is at work. I'm just your humble servant, bringing the word of God, distributing the word of God, because very soon the bride of Jesus Christ must be taken into rapture. It is my personal testimony. You are not forced to believe it, but it was heavy in my heart for me to share with, uh, especially with my brothers in flesh, in my own family, because they don't, many don't understand me. And to other brothers in Christ, to know that uh, the decision that we took to follow Jesus Christ is not in vain. May God richly bless you. Amen.